Yeah, just following the footsteps of other players who have really made it big by having a lot of success on Magic Online. If you think about perhaps one of the greatest, Reed Duke. Yes. Right? That's kind of how he got started. And then, you know, just continued to build on that success and then eventually started dominating tabletop magic. Could be seeing the start of that for Nathan Storer, but Ely Cassis, well, he got here by winning a set championship, so he's peaking very high over the course of the last year, and he's looking to go all the way with it here at the World Championship. Let's get into the match. Interesting, and perhaps lucky for us, we are seeing the one non-Esper mid-range deck in the finals here against Esper. That's Grixis in the hands of Nathan. And you said it on our lead-in here, Paul. You feel like Nathan said, hey, I have an advantage. Like, my deck's built to beat yours. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, a lot of it just kind of comes down to the fact that his removal spells line up very well with whatever Ely's trying to do. And just Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's just been so impressive in all the games that Nathan Stoyer has played. And... It's just one of those things where every single mode on Fable needs to be answered. We've seen Ely aggressively go after Fable, right? It's like, yes. oh, you made a token? Well, you know what? I'm not even going to kill the token. I'm going to kill the Fable before you rummage, before you discard, or before you make that reflection. Perfect start here for Nathan Stoyer. He gets to use Make Disappear to counter a wedding announcement. And he gets to resolve Fable the Mirror Breaker here. A second copy of wedding announcement in hand, though, for Ely. And he's going to run out out there. The players are incentivized to get these powerful enchantments on board as early as possible so that they can go through their chapters and generate that value over time. The later you play it, the longer you have to wait to get all of the chapters. Absolutely. An incredible start here for Nathan Stoyer. You have the Fable into with the Make Disappear on 2. And now, I, I mean, if you can find an untapped Black Source, he can go ahead and attack and then cast and invoke the Spare this turn. Wow, that's really fast. That would wipe the board for Ely Cassis and net a card for Stoyer. Doesn't quite get there. We've seen this before. You don't want to draw multiple copies of Shiv and Reef, as that does prevent you from casting Invoke Despair. Invoke but, Despair is a tough, tough card to cast. But, you know, you, got, you can just go with the backup play here of, uh, I guess I'll just play another Fable of the Breaker, <laughs> right? Good luck. Just flood the board with Fables, it is really difficult to overcome multiple Fables. Also, multiple wedding announcement has, has a similar effect on the board. Oh, man, and this is going to be rough. I mean, look at how oh. these cards are lining up. Nathan's going to go make this appear on AO, and then he's going to untap and cast Invoke Despair next turn. Ely will have no board and will be facing up against two 2-2 two, two tokens here and a Reflection and another Reflection coming on the following turn. Nathan Stoyer really putting his mark on this opening game of the title match. He's had everything lined up perfectly. Two make disappears, hitting two key targets. He's crunching in. Life total's also falling for Ely because he's, he's already down to 12. Right, he's going to go to 10, lose a token, add a wedding announcement. I just don't see how he comes back from all of this. So when Nathan passes, it's going to be a 1-1? One, one? You have a 1-1, one, one, and then you have a Wandering Emperor against what Nathan has here? Yeah, Wandering Emperor does really well as kind of a support card, but it is one of the few cards that Ely plays that doesn't just win the game on its own if left unchecked, even though it is solid. You know, it's not quite a Shieldred or a Rafine. Yeah, and Infernal Grasp was nice, allows you to deal with at least one reflection of Kiki Jiki here, but Nathan does have the ability to get this 2 3 off the battlefield, still swing in for four next turn, get a reflection, and then play another Fable. Wow, triple Fable of the Mirror Breaker, all of them resolving here for Nathan Stoyer. So there's the, the second copy transforming into Reflection of Kiki Jiki. That's the type of card you cannot leave on the battlefield. And this is the deck that really takes advantage of it the best, right? You have not only Blood Tithe Harvester, which allows you to just kill anything on the board, you also have Corpse Appraiser, which is a phenomenal card in this matchup. You just have so many targets to kill, and a lot of the creatures that this Esper, Esper deck plays are creatures that you want to return from the graveyard, right? You're talking right. about Tenacious Underdog, Denik, and Corpse Appraiser just prevents you, prevents the Esper decks to, to play the long game because they don't have access to those cards. That's right. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, that that's the one thing you give up by sleeving up Esper. You get some of the most powerful cards in standard, but perhaps not the most powerful card, which is Fable of the Mirror Breaker. 
And boy, does Ely wish he had a few of those right now because he is getting absolutely run over by two copies of Fable, and he's going to be facing a third one in a minute here, too. There's Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Is, is he, is he just going to go minus, the just kill the, kill the creature? He does. Wow. Maximum aggression here from Nathan Stoyer using Attack Liliana Veil to take out a 1-1. One, one. And Ely going to kill the reflection. And small note there, Nathan could have chosen to copy a token, right? Because that would give you a potential extra treasure. But instead choosing to attack because recognizing that Ely could have a removal spell there. And instead wants to get in for maximum damage. And he does just that. Down to four goes Ely Cassis here in our opening game. Nathan Sawyer likes what he sees. And that is game number one going to Nathan. He's finally able to break the curse. He just needs to win one of these next two to take the opening match and prove that he can, in fact, beat Ely Cassis, something he's not been able to do this weekend. Right. And remember, I mean, Nathan, I believe, took a game off of Ely the last time around mm. as well. And Ely managed to come back and win that match. So still lots and lots of magic to be played. Best two out of three matches here. But you've got to get started somewhere. You've got to at least know that you could get Ely once. That's right. You get that confidence going. I feel like Nathan had it. You know, I think he, know, like, look, we're talking about a sample size of two whole matches, right? In what is ultimately so that's everything. a nope. close matchup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, we can just uh, write an article on it straight off of that. I mean, even with an advantage to Nathan, you know, with the build that he has and the fact that it's not a mirror match, what are we talking about here? It's not it. He doesn't have some like silver bullet for the vampire here, right? Right, right. He doesn't have a card that just goes win the game versus Esper Control, right. right? It's just he, just the way that his cards line up against Ely, he has a small advantage. We're talking about a 5% advantage. This is not Explorer where you have those, you know, extremely polarized matchups where somebody is an 80 20 favorite. That's just not the case here. This is just good old fashioned, grindy mid range mirror, you know try to outmaneuver your opponent, and, uh, and then just see where the cards lay. Yeah, the most interesting card for me from Nathan is his choice for Invoke Despair. He's playing the full four copies. That card costs four black mana and a generic. I mean, <laughs> that is, when you're playing a three-color deck, you have to accommodate that, right? Most of the time, when we see Nathan cast it, it's off of a treasure plus some combination of lands. Okay, opening hands here for game number two. Ely Cassis is on the play. Ooh, no white mana and three white cards there. Yeah, it's a little rough. All he has of access to is the turn to Tenacious Underdog. Not sure that that's going to be enough here. So he's going to send that back. Now he sees a four lander with Rafine, Void, Voidrend, and Anointed Peacekeeper. Good cards, but all three drops. All three drops, but still feel like it's a better hand there. Um, the Plaza of Heroes does allow Ely to play that Rafine, so multiple plays on turn three. Nathan also with a fantastic hand here, right? Really important to just make sure you have an answer to Rafine. He's got that cut down, has the two drop, and has, of course, that Vortex, which can kill anything, but most notably has the ability to get, e uh, to get AO off the battlefield without giving Ely any advantages. You see that cut down in hand for Nathan Stoyer. That's usually reserved for Rafine. Wouldn't be surprised if Ely led off with Anointed Peacekeeper here. That is often a better way to go to help make a plan and also to potentially set your opponent back on whatever their next play was going to be. But, you know, there is an incentive to get Rafine on the battlefield as soon as possible. The first attack you get already starts to generate you advantage. Yeah, oftentimes, if you have the choice between playing a creature and Rafine and there's nothing else in play, you generally just go with the thing that makes a creature. So, mm -hmm. Wedding Announcement, in this case, Anointed Peacekeeper. Mm -hmm. Not a card you commonly see in these Esper decks, but they are playing the one copy of it in their deck. So, we'll likely see that Peacekeeper go on the stack here for Ely. Of yeah. course, Ely needs to be considering things that we know aren't there. Make Disappear right. is a card, but with... Ely's hand can't really play around it too much. I think you're just kind of in a situation where you probably just want to go ahead and play a card, but perhaps Ely thinking, you know what? I don't want to play into your counter spell. You're probably going to play a permanent next turn. I'm going to void rend, untap, then play a card. Yeah, and it's tough because if Nathan does have um, a counter spell for your peacekeeper, 
Then he gets to just untap and play Corpse Appraiser. It feels bad, and we've seen that sequence happen a bunch for Nathan. Yeah, it did turn out, however, that if Ely did go for the Anointed Peacekeeper, nothing bad would have happened to him, no. right? So, things not lining up well here for Ely. In the first game, he ran out waiting announcement right into Make Disappear. This time, he decides to hold back, but it actually would have resolved his Peacekeeper. <laughs> now right. he draws his own Make Disappear. Does he want to change his plans? Yeah, and um, just interesting to see just kind of Ely's approach, approach to this matchup. A lot of time, you know, when we've seen Nathan play against the, the other Esper decks, you see a lot of the time the Esper player just kind of playing their creatures into Nathan's removal and just going, look, I'm just going to have to try to run you out of all your removal spells. Ely playing it a little more patiently here, right? This guy absolutely does not want to run it to make this appear. Probably going to wait until turn five before he decides to run at that Peacekeeper to pay for make this appear. Yeah, I think Nathan's not going to argue with having a slightly slower plan. His deck tends to play a little bit slower. It has a little bit more rock hard advantage going into the late game, and it probably suit him just fine. All right, Blood Tithe Harvester is going to hit the battlefield. And uh, that lets Nathan Stoyer leave up Infernal Grasp, but just as importantly, it lets him continue to kind of bluff this Make Disappear that Ely has so far played around. Now, finally, Ely can play a land and actually just pay, so he doesn't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, and a nice thing there is not only do you want to spend the, your mana when you can in this matchup, but by killing the creature, this also allows you to play around a Make Disappear right. and a Sacrifice. All right, finally, this Anointed Peacekeeper is going to go on the stack. Land first there from Ely, just in case there was a Make Disappear, though, as we know, there, there doesn't happen to be this time. Yeah, and uh, given that Nathan can cast Infernal Grasp, perhaps he's going to name Infernal Grasp just to kind of tie up Nathan's mana for this turn. Although Nathan still has something to do, given that Nathan is a little bit flooded with four lands in hand, you're probably going to see him sacrifice that blood, discard a card, try to find some kind of a threat. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, always something you're happy to see. Infernal Grasp is the name here for Ili Cassis. He gets a 3-3 Vigilance on the battlefield as well. And let's see if Nathan wants to cash in. Get that Shiv and Reef out of there. No interest in two copies of that card. Although I suppose, no, no, he's got two blue sources in play. That's more than enough. Mm -hmm. OK, Blood Token. Shivan Reef gone, and he finds a second copy of Rona's Vortex. A little slow, but he's not under much pressure. He's still at 20, hasn't actually taken damage yet. Yeah, so has an answer to basically anything that Ely Cassis can do, yeah. but would love to find the cards that allow him to kind of filter through his deck. Cards like Fable, Reckoner Bankbuster, something powerful like an Invoke Despair. OK. Looks like he played around with the idea of Rona's Vortex, but decided against it. Looking at perhaps an upkeep anointed peacekeeper. Excuse me, removal spell on the anointed peacekeeper. Probably, oh, going for the Rona's Vortex here instead of the Grasp. I suppose this, I suppose once you get the peacekeeper off the battlefield, you now, the Grasp then becomes a two mana threat. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see this. This is good. Ely Cassis is going to protect. His anointed peacekeeper, which will allow him to get Rafine down on the battlefield. Right. And there's no way for Nathan to pay for ward here. So there's an attack with anointed peacekeeper and Rafine out. That's kind of the game plan for uh, oh, for Ely. Oh, maybe you want to do Shizuki. that instead. And Nathan doesn't ha does have the Rona's vortex to kill the Kaito, but Ely at least is going to get a card here off the Kaito. And that's an expensive Rona's Vortex to have to pay again for Nathan Stoyer. Right, and this just makes the mana so awkward for Nathan, right? Infernal Grasp costing four mana, Rona's Vortex also costing four mana. Can't kill both the Peacekeeper and deal with the Kaito next turn. There's the Shipwreck Marsh going into hand here for Ely. He's considering if he'd like to play a land for the turn or just ship it. He's just going to say go. It is interesting that the sizing of just 3-3 three, three in this format is actually fairly strong it or is. stronger than normal. We're looking at a, a metagame where people are playing cards like Destroy Evil to kill four toughness creatures, people playing Cutdowns to kill Rafine. So all of a sudden, it's just really annoying to get something like a Peacekeeper off the battle. It's really funny. <laughs> three mana, three, three. All right, and we're going to once again go to Ely Cassis's upkeep. 
And we're once again going to try to take care of this Sonia Peacekeeper nope. with Rona's Vortex. Excuse me, uh, Kaito with yeah. Rona's Vortex. Kaito is the card that gives him a card advantage. And Ely hovering over the Plaza of Heroes does not give Planeswalkers hexproof, just legendary creatures. All right, so is it Rafina Clock? No, I guess not. Choosing to play, oh, because Ely does know about Cutdown, right? right? So if you play Rafine, it gets cut down. Ely going to play it extra patient, going to wait until he can go Rafine and have up Plaza of Heroes. Smart here from Ely Cassis. Using the information that he has available as he passes the turn back over to Nathan Stoyer, who kind of doesn't have anything going on yeah, here. He's just been drawing removal spells and lands. He's, he's definitely got some great draws, but right now, I mean, just continuing to take damage from the Peacekeeper here, we'll, but will be able to resolve this Infernal Grasp on he's the also, Peacekeeper. He's also taking a look at Takanuma. Okay. So you have something good to get back? I, I believe there was a Blood Tide Harvester, maybe, right? That, void, that was void rendered, so probably just looking to get that back. There it is. But remember, you play this, Nathan will not have the ability to cast a cut down this turn. And Ely, because of how patiently he played it, will be able to go Rafine next turn and have protection for it for a removal spell. He finds a Rafine's tower. And finally, he can deploy Rafine's Scheming Seer. Card has won and these guys a lot of games this weekend. And knows that at least for this turn, doesn't need to play a land just yet, right? Nathan only has access to one mana, so he cannot cut down the Rafine until his turn. And that, of course, means that he's going to get some value. Now, this is a little interesting because he didn't actually find he did a non-land. So there is a trade possibility here for Story. Right, so there's going to be a trade here. And Nathan now does have the ability to go cut down an Infernal Grasp to get the Rafine off the battlefield. Yeah, it looks like we may see Iganjo here. Uh, Ely just wanting to keep the creatures <laughs> on the battlefield. A little nice there from Nathan. <laughs> because remember, Ely knows Nathan's hand. He knows that Nathan has double removal spell, so can't exactly protect the Rafine. So just wants to make sure that he can just have more pressure on the battlefield here. He's going to play his land out so he can cycle Rafine's tower next turn at the worst and maybe even be able to cast something after. There's a blood token to cash in a land for a land. In fact, the same exact okay, one. And so look at Nathan that. There's has another. Nothing. So now we're both looking at just nothing on both this sides of happens. the table here. This is weird. This does not happen in this in this mid-range mirror not. very often. We have never seen late game just empty board. Nobody has any action. But the way that this is played out, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. Who's going to draw the draw the strongest cards here? That we're basically just in top deck mode here. Nathan deciding if it, he needs to use Infernal Grasp on Anointed Peacekeeper. What's his life total? 14? He's doing okay. Yeah, probably just wants to fire it off here. And now Ely does get several draws here, right? He does. We do have the draw step and the Rafine's Tower to find Shieldred, to find Wandering Emperor, to find Ao. Oh, there's Wandering Emperor right off the top of the library, Paul. And, and given that Nathan doesn't have access to blue mana, well, I suppose he can already pay for the Make This Appear, will Ely choose to cast the Wandering Emperor at end of turn? Because if you play a Wandering Emperor now and make a token, if Nathan top decks something like an Invoke Despair, right, that would kill the token and the Planeswalker. Yeah, way too risky. Ely also has enough mana to cast Wandering Emperor and cycle the Rafine's Tower. Right, and waiting to make sure you resolve the Emperor first so you don't run into the Make Disappear. Right, sequencing matters. So he's going to make a 2-2. Two -two. You see that Infernal Grasp in hand there for Stoyer, so he could kill the 2-2 two -two if he wants. Let's see what Ely finds, though, off of this Rafine's Tower. Oh, wow, another land! Okay. Oh, but there's Rafine Scheming Seer, and Nathan's going to be happy he kept that Infernal Grasp right. on him. Right. However, Ely does have the protection with the Plaza of Heroes. Right. This is something that's a relatively newer addition to these Esper decks that allows your land to do something in the late game, so this Infernal Grasp won't even do anything. Really Nathan great. needs to find two removal spells to get this Rafine off the battlefield. Yeah, he can use one now to force Ely to tap out effectively, and if he draws one on his turn, he'll have that window 
but it is a very narrow window, and you can't imagine that Nathan's going to be able to win if he draws, say, a land or something next turn. And look at this. Doesn't even go for the Rafine. Doesn't just, just saying, look, I don't want you to get uh, to loot, oh. to filter through, because I cannot kill the Rafine here. Wow, Nathan Story really needs to find something to get himself to back spare? in, and it's another swamp. How is this happening? So many lands, no fables, right? He's had to use multiple blood tokens here to filter through his lands, but still can't Ooh, find something. Negate off the top of the library wow. for Ely, and that looks like an insurance policy from here. Yeah, this is big. So now, you know, Nathan was looking at something like an Invoke Despair off the top to get him back into this, but now he's going to have to go back to back. And with the attack here, I think Nathan could potentially be on just a two-turn clock here if Ely discards a spell here. And boy, did wow. he find some. There's a Denik. He can discard the land as well. That's five damage. That's lethal next turn. And it's hard to imagine uh, Nathan getting through the negate here. And I think, is Ely just going to run out the Shieldra 2 with the negate backup? Probably. Doesn't have the ability to protect the Rafine, but you just play an extra creature. And that just forces Nathan to just deal with so many creatures that all can be lethal. Yeah, and Negate really does handle basically anything that Nathan could find at this exactly. point that would be relevant. We're going to see a third game here. Yeah. Ely Kassi says, not so easy, my friend. And that is game number two going to Ely Kassi as he works his way closer to perhaps winning the first match of our best of three matches today. Ely is not going to make it easy here for Nathan. And just really loving the way that Ely sequenced his spells there, right? It's, it was it would have just been so easy to just play your creatures on her, and that would have made it so much easier for Nathan to just get go through all of Ely's resources, but just, just kind of having the understanding of, look, if I just play my things into your removal spells, then you're going to have the advantage. And this is what's allowed you to beat all those other Esper decks. Maybe I should take a little more time. Yeah. Yeah, really leveraging that plaza as well. I like how uh, Ely stared down at that, uh, that Peacekeeper. You know, it's one of those situations where, you know, on the draw, you know, on my notes, it tells me maybe I should take it out. But <laughs> it did just win me that game. Um, you don't want to disrespect it after I it mean, just got you a dub. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm the only one guilty of, uh, you know, perhaps making some decisions based on what happened in the previous game. Oh, yeah. Recency bias. Oh, it's yeah. It's very real. <laughs> All right. Game number three coming up here. If you're just tuning in, we're really happy to have you along. We're watching World Championship 28. This is the title match. And we play these title matches. We don't want it to all be down to just one best two out of three. With so much on the line, remember the winner's going to get $100,000 and a really sick trophy behind us here. We're going to play best two out of three matches. This is simply the first one. So even with a win, either player, since they both won a game, Ooh. they will not be your world champion just yet. Wow, and Nathan did mulligan that hand, did not have enough blue sources. And mulligan's into... The kind of the starting hand that we've seen him use to kind of win all his matches. Fable of, Mirror, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, right? That's right. He's got Blood Tithe Harvester into Fable, and he even just drew a cut down for that. A Rafine Scheming Seer off the top of the library. There's two in hand now for Ely. Ely's already got a decision on what to use Infernal Grasp on. Usually, you'll see the players wait because especially in the mirror match, there's a Rafine on the other side. But even here, sometimes there's something better. He also doesn't want to give any oh, food and look for at a this. potential Nathan playing it a little patiently here. Doesn't want to run it to make this appear. Wants to keep up removal instead. But this is actually going to be better for Ely, right? Because he didn't run out that Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Ely will then go Ender Turn Infernal Grasp on his turn. Ooh. Either play it slow. Right? We might see Drago from both sides, especially because he drew the Make Disappear. Right. Alternatively, the, the play would have been run out of Kaito instead of a Rafine, so that you can at least get some value by making a token and forcing the action on Nathan. And look at that. The cutdown was actually going into Yard, but he's got another. Ooh, and there's an Invoke to spare, but he's miles away from yeah, casting and that. Nathan filters the Blood Token there 
really wanted to play out that Fable on that previous turn. That was his window, right, to resolve Fable and make sure that he continues hitting his land drops. But now he's kind of forced to be a little more proactive because he's missing a land drop for the turn. He has to dig. A small sign of desperation there for Nathan, and it's going to be pounced on by Ely Cassis. He counters the Fable, and he's going to now resolve a powerful Planeswalker, Kaito Shizuki, onto the battlefield, and he's going to set up for wow. Rafi. And, and, and can Nathan draw a land here? No. So this is really, really tough. Nathan really wants to play out a Fable, but this means next turn Ely can attack. He can play Rafine, attack with the unblockable, draw a card off the Kaito. Wow, these, this land situation for Nathan Stewart has to be so annoying. Yeah. Although this Earth type might think, make things a little more interesting, but just playing a Rafine and getting what? A potentially a 2 2 or 3 3 unblockable creature also seems strong, and you get to, you get to dig a card deeper. He's just going to take the card, it looks like. Perhaps the addition of Airtai Resurrected into the hand here of Ely Cassis has changed the yeah. route for him. That's happened twice this game, right? He drew the Make Disappear earlier. Urtai is just a little bit awkward, though, when your opponents miss the land drop, right? So now you're using it to kill the 2-2, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But this gives Nathan two draws at a land here. And he hit one, although it is a tap land, but that one's not. There's a Sheevan Reef that he can play. But I suppose because Fable was in play, Ely just thinking, look, really great shot. You're going to find a land here anyway, so I'm just going to make sure I just add to my board here and make sure you don't ramp up with that 2-2 token that you have in play. Yeah, sometimes you just have to recognize that you're not going to be able to keep Nathan off of lands here indefinitely and just make the best play for you. He could still only play one land a turn, after all, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a Shivan Reef this time. Cut down on the Urtai, very clean, but by doing so, doesn't have an answer for a Rafine if Elich would choose to cast next turn. Yeah, once again, Nathan Stoyer feeling the pressure of those missed land drops, just needs to tap out again. This is a good mana efficient turn for him. He gets Corpse Appraiser down, he exiles Airtai, and he also got to kill the opposing threat. <coughs> but you don't want to give Ely the open door, right? right? He will absolutely punish you for this. And I think we're going to see Rafine next turn start to get rolling. Yeah, going to see a Rafine. Ely's going to see three new cards next turn. Would really like to find some kind of a counter spell or a duress effect to get that Invoke Despair out of Nathan's hand. All right, here it is, the centerpiece of the deck. Rafine Scheming Seer with this 1-1 one, one Unblockable right. Ninja. Ooh, that is a great draw. So now you have Wedding Announcement. You, you can also follow this up by a Wedding Announcement. But keep in mind, Nathan has Invoke Despair in hand. If he can find an untapped Black Source, Kaito down, Wedding Announcement down, Token down. Wow. This is why he runs it. It's got to be the swingiest card in the matchup, Invoke Despair, when Nathan Story gets to resolve it. Right, and this but is in Ely this playing this and just going, maximum. okay, just, just, just please, just don't despair me. Right. Untap Black Source. Oh, oh it's that Shivan Reef, Reef again. These things are just Aye. daggering him over and over. Look, the man is tough when you're trying to cast three different colors, and one of them is quadruple black, but that is rough. And now Nathan has no choice but to go for the main phase vortex here. But I think Ely's board is just going to perhaps get a little too overwhelming here. Next turn has the ability to run out Shieldred or another Rafine. We've talked about how this deck has the ability to snowball, right? It gets something going, and then all of a sudden, it completely dominates. Wow, oh. there's AO the Dawn Sky off the top of the library here for Cassis. It's got a lot of action. Look at that hand. Shieldred, Rafine, and Ao in hand. Yeah, although right now Ely doesn't have an answer to this reflection of Kiki Jiki. Perhaps Nathan can utilize the advantages from reflection with perhaps the, refle the, uh, the Blood Tithe Harvester or the Corpse Praiser to kind of come back from this. Ely's going to attack in with Ninja once again and discard a land. He will get a card off Untap land. Kaido. No, no untapped what? land. Untapped land would have allowed Ely to run out the Shieldred. But now he does have the negate for the Invoke Despair. And with the way that the mana works out, Nathan has the mana to cast Invoke Despair and make a copy with Reflection. Will he make that play? 
I feel like Ely's just not going to not leave up Negate for the rest of the game. Yeah, very likely. Right, he just yeah. cannot afford to give Nathan Sawyer a window for Invoke Despair at this point, particularly because his permanents are so diverse. He happens to have Enchantment Creature and Planeswalker. So Infernal Grasp, great way to deal with the other, the Rafine that's in play. But it looks like he's going to instead take Negate to allow himself to go Despair with Negate backup potentially in a future turn. Long-term game plan, but it'll work. Given the careful tapping, I don't think we're going to see an Invoke Despair here. Looks like he's considering the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Right. All right, so this is just Rafine and a token here in front of the Kaito. Could also maybe just let the Kaito go down to one. It looks like that's what he's going to do rather right. than chump block. Yeah. yeah. Any tokens on the battlefield are so much more powerful with that wedding announcement ticking away. Absolutely. And again, I, th I think he... This is interesting. Ely is now, now at the point where he goes, look, is it, is it worth it for me to counter this fable, or is it absolutely important that I have an answer to invoke this bear? And Ely recognizing what the most important card that can get Nathan back in this game could be. Nathan is not done yet. The, both of these players have very powerful hands. Once again, Rafine is going to trigger. This is the third time now. Ely wants to go wide here, only attacking with one, and that was a great draw here for Ely Cassis. Now has an answer to Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which has been causing him, causing him all kinds of potential problems. I'm curious to see if Nathan wants to use Negate. Both players kind of have an idea for the Negate, right? Either right. to counter an Invoke or to protect an Invoke, but there's been some really good stuff oh, put on the stack And here. untapped land was great here. Now Ely can go Shieldred, Negate, Infernal Grasp, right? Wow. If he runs out Shieldred, Nathan doesn't have an answer to the Shieldred just yet. This is Ely capitalizing on the lead that he's gained. Ooh, he's actually considering AO. Okay, that also, that also works. I kind of like having the ability to cast three spells. That's very right. tempting. If you go Shieldred and Nathan goes end of turn, try to kill it, then you can just simply counter. Mm -hmm. AO is extremely powerful. But this is a much more mana efficient play. Shieldred, oh, the Apocalypse, man. goes on the stack. And does Ely need to use Infernal Grasp now? It is interesting. You can consider doing it on upkeep, but then if you do, <laughs> then you can make a Corpse Appraiser. Exactly. Unclear if there's still a creature in the graveyard. That would probably be the, the difference maker. And just choosing to wait. Oh, oh for and there's please. an answer for Shieldred. Back Boy. and forth. These negates <laughs> have a lot of good targets. <clears throat> okay, so this is in the draw phase before the Fable trigger? Yeah, it looks like the Shielder triggers on the stack. Right. And yeah, Ely says, you know what? It's worth it to protect Shielder, the Apocalypse here. Right. But uh, if he's going to say that, Nathan's probably going to say, well, it's worth it to kill Shielder, the Apocalypse here. And, and then here, his do, you, do you see an Infernal Grasp on the Reflection in response? Because yeah. if this resolves, then you can make... There's food. There's food. I suppose Ely can just go, you know what? I'm just going to kill the Corpse Appraiser when you try to copy it. True. And just hope that the reflection doesn't get out of hand later. Right. That is the higher upside play in the short term. It does open the door for, for some nonsense. And Nathan right now does have to deal with an unblockable creature and a flying creature. Rafine still in play. There's an AO lined up and an Infernal Grasp at the ready as well. And let's not forget, Kaito Shizuki is still over there generating advantage on top of all these other things. This is an interesting attack. Wow, I, that's aggressive. You can just block with the Tutu here, right? I suppose this could also represent, Nathan could be try to represent a in a braid. Yeah. 
but Healy because he's having none of it. He just snaps off a, off a block with Rafine. There's a Blood Tithe Harvester, and now Ely says, oh, okay, maybe I do need to actually take out this Reflection. Right, but that would allow Nathan to get some value here with the Corpse Appraiser. Because we do know that at least the Shield is in the yard here. Yes. Now, this creature will be exiled, but it'll just give Nathan the best card in the top three cards of his library. Like that one. <laughs> Eat a Shieldred and get one into your hand. Seems like a fine deal from Nathan Stoyer's perspective. And now the Harvester will resolve and produce the Blood Token. But now we're... Now Ely is positioned to line up a very... Ooh! A very big attack here. Yeah, when I see Wander and Emperor at this stage of the game, Just I do attack start with to everything. think get about in. plus one, plus one counters. Right? Yeah. Four triggers? This is a huge attack here. Oh, and look Elikasis. at that. That's and four counters action. on the unblockable. Wow. Blood Tithe Harvester will not be enough to kill this giant unblockable creature. So, so Nathan needs to block both 2-2s. Two and then we're looking at... And, and then he gets to one if the... 6-8 Wandering Emperor will then deal potentially one more point of damage right. there. Right. Right, so not quite lethal. Super close. And this is, okay, Nathan is going to block both. So if that's the case, does the Wandering Emperor prefer to just maintain board state and kill a Corpse right. Appraiser it, it's or just gonna something kill, like that? Yeah, it's just going to kill Corpse Appraiser, and then you can still disturb a Denic into play and draw a card here. Oh so, my. so Invoke Despair just doesn't even get it done here. Not right? even close. He's down to two. Shielder of the Apocalypse either. You're going to get another flyer out of the deal, too. Wow. Oh, and there's a card off of Kaito And Shizuki. a card as well. Ooh. Plaza Could just play an Aeo instead now. How about two. that? Yeah, this is just way too much here for this Nathan. This is overload. Nathan Stoyer has been properly overloaded here. Invoke Despair just is not enough at this juncture. And that is match number one going to Ely Cassis. He refuses <laughs> to, lead, to lose to Nathan Stoyer. And now we're going to get two more matches potentially. And if Ely wins either one, he's going to be your world champion. Yeah, Incredible he, stuff from Ely. He just will not give up and will not lose I to mean, Nathan Stoyer. Starting from yesterday, Ely has been completely unstoppable. He went 6-0 yesterday and hasn't lost a match today. And today, same fashion against Nathan, right? Drop game one. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna, you know, he's always been cool, calm, and collected. I'm just, you know, just I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be chill. And, and then, and then Nathan, good luck. You know, I'm gonna get you in game two, game three. I'm gonna play my game and just been so impressed with just the way that Ely has just kind of put together these matchups, playing around all the different threats yes. that, that that Nathan could have, right? At any given point, it's like, what's the worst that can happen? Okay, well, I'm going to make sure that I don't play into that and do something else. And just that kind of back and forth is what makes these kind of mid-range matchups so fun to watch. Yeah, you know, maybe it's not Nathan Stoyer. Maybe nobody can beat Ely Cassis. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have the next match from our title match. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to coverage here of the Magic the Gathering World Championship. I'm Marcel Sutcliffe. And this is Paul Chion. Thanks so much for joining us here in Las Vegas. You got to see some scenes from the broader convention scene here, but we're focused on competitive magic and crowning a world champion over here in the corner. Ely Cassis just took a major step in that direction. We're playing best two out of three matches, and he just won the first match against Nathan Stoyer. He has not lost to Nathan in this tournament. It doesn't look like he's going to start anytime soon. If he can win this next match, Paul, he's going to be hoisting that trophy, and we're going to be done. Now, Nathan Stoyer, though, he feels he has a better matchup. He's been playing very well all weekend, and he has every chance here to snap off two wins in a row and, uh, and take this trophy home. But he's run into kind of the unstoppable juggernaut here in Ely Cassis. And Nathan going, hey, by the way, uh, I'm going to go first. I think <laughs> it would, be, uh, and see how it it would behoove me to, uh, to, to choose to play first That's here. That's right. But yeah, if there's any chance of a comeback here for Nathan Stoyer, it starts now. That's right. It's Grixis midrange in the hands of Nathan, Esper midrange in the hands of Ely Cassis. 
and uh, game one, right? We're back to no sideboarded games here. It's a fresh match and a fresh start. You know, hopefully for Nathan, he was able to just take a minute to himself and say, all right, let's start again. You know how it is. It's one game at a time. It's one turn at a time. There's really no point to try to take it on anything more than that. And let's get into the action. Nathan Sawyer is going to be on the play, as you heard him say, coming in. Ely with yeah, that's a slow hand for Ely Cassis. Infernal Grasp, AO, and a bunch of lands. It's, it's deciding. A little, it's a little tough here. I mean, on the draw, you can't really rely on being quite as aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. So perhaps just thinking, okay, well, I have some removal. I can kill a Blood Tide Harvester early. I do have that AO. That Iganjo is also technically a bad removal spell. So maybe just not wanting to be down a card here and potentially have the, the chance of going down to five. All right, Blood Tithe Harvester, a little more of an aggressive start on the play here for Nathan's story. We've seen him be oh. a little more, more towards the react on two and then play something proactive on three, but he's got Blood Tithe Harvester down straight away. And great draw here from wow. Ely. Might have been uh, forced to fire off that Infernal Grasp here on the Blood Tithe Harvester, but now just a Denik. Great trade if Nathan gives Ely the opportunity at a trade here. He's not going to just cold rip a Rafine here, is he? Oh, my God. I mean, like just goes from nothing on two and three, basically to just. I, if he does, of course it would be awesome. But yeah. you know, it's uh, sometimes that's what it takes to win something like this, right? You're playing against the best in the world. Here's duress, only the one target, and it, another blood tithe harvester. Oh boy, don't do it to him, Ely. Yeah, Nathan might just kill the Denik just in case something like that happens. Oh, okay, right? sure. Okay, it's Wandering Emperor off the top of the library here for Ely Cassis. That's going to add to the other four drop and the five drop in hand, meaning he doesn't have a lot going on this turn. Yeah, really needed to find some kind of play here for Ely Cassis. Nathan Howard needs to find lands, finds that dreaded second ship and reef. But <laughs> I, I trust I, both every I time. don't think he's going to complain regardless because he still has a great play here in Blood Tithe Harvester plus Reckoner Bankbuster. Nathan plays four copies of Shiv and Reef and seems to draw three of them every game whenever he has invoked Despair in hand, which he also, by the way, plays four copies of, so it's kind right. of what he signed up for. Nathan valuing the Bankbuster a little bit more than the Harvester, as Ely does have mana up, to, so Ely would have the choice of make disappearing one of those drops if he had it. Now uh, Tenacious Underdog shows up, but that's a little bit late to the party as there may be bigger fish to fry here. Yeah. For Ely, because he's and with Airtie Resurrected or Wandering Emperor. Right, and I don't think Ely has maybe the luxury here of just trying to run something out main, main phase. Mm -hmm. I think he, he just goes, Nathan, if you have some kind of counterspell, go for it, but I need to play something here at instant speed. Perhaps it's an Urtai to kill a Harvester and block the other one so you don't have anything uh, anything on the board to, to attack me with. Perhaps it's me playing the Wandering Emperor, exiling maybe a, a Bank Buster. We've seen Nathan already be fairly aggressive with that before. But given that Nathan doesn't have any other plays, it does make sense to draw a card here with the Bank Buster. Yeah, he's got some time. He's ahead on board. He is behind on cards. You can see five cards in hand for Ely. And Nathan Stoyer, having drawn an extra one, goes up to three, but it's two lands and an Invoke. Yeah, Nathan does have the ability to run out the Invoke next turn. Would have to play out the Xander's Lounge to guarantee four Black Sources comes into play next turn. He's going to attack this turn with the two Harvesters, and this is great for Ely, right? This is what he needed, and he needs no Make yeah. Disappear, which he's going to be relieved to see there isn't Ely one. can just go Wandering and probably doesn't care about his life totals too much and can just choose to make a 2-2 here, right? Make a 2-2 here, block the Harvester next turn, lots of different options, right? If you're afraid, about invo if you're afraid of Invoke Despair, you can just keep up the Urtai, right? Alternatively, you can just go, fine, go for it. I still have this AO in play. Yeah, make a 2-2, make another 2-2. Yeah, this works out really well for Ely Cassis, and he's got to feel a lot better about that long pause from Nathan Stoyer. If there was a make disappear, you got to figure he would have cast it yeah, right yeah. away. I think that's that's kind of a timing bluff. Yes. But in this instance, I mean, if you have a make disappear, you're definitely using it on the Wandering Emperor. Right, I think after a few seconds, Ely thought, okay, I think this is actually going to get through, and it does. 2-2 two -two token jumps in front of Blood Tithe Harvester. And now it's Ely Cassis' turn. He finds Ludovic Necrogenius. 
That does give him the ability to double spell here if he really wants, but boy, it's going to be hard not to leave up Airtie Resurrected given the possibility of a looming Invoke Despair. Right, it's what's the last card in your hand? Do I need to put some pressure on you? You're drawing a bunch of cards here with the Bang Buster. You also have three blood in play to filter through yeah. bad draws. And we're going to see those used up here on that. Or uh, He does need the Haunted Ridge, doesn't he? For, for the he does. fourth black, so maybe he not. He does. Maybe might, not. He, he might hold on to them for now. Also, playing the AO might not be so great because Nathan on board just has a way to kill the AO. Yes. Right, with the three blood in play. Blood Tithe Harvester would deal uh, minus four, minus four. Ooh, is he going to discard Haunted Ridge? Uh, you know, it, this also makes sense from Nathan's side because with Ely passing with five mana up and Wandering Emperor already in play, that's already telling Nathan, you know, it's really likely. To, oh, excuse me. Nathan already knows about Urtai. Yes. Right? You see the eyeball there. He did He did cast a, a Duress. So mm -hmm. he knows about the Urtai. So he knows that since Ely is keeping up the Urtai, I, I can't just jam and invoke the spare next turn. So nope. instead, I'm going to. Well. Interesting. Does that change your mind? Because remember, the Urtai Resurrected does give you the card back. It's, it's sort of like a big tempo hit. If you could just follow it up with another invoke. Right, but, but as it stands, he got rid of the land, and he can't cast Invoke under any circumstance at the moment. So Liliana of the Veil is going to go on the stack. And I think Ely is kind of in a spot here where he just kind of is going for Urtai on any target. Yeah. Right? He's just like, look, you know about this, right? So I'm just going to fire it off because if he doesn't, it's, it's a disaster in terms of tempo because oh. he just doesn't play anything for the turn. So there we go. Urtai Resurrected is going to counter target spell activated or triggered ability. And then the controller will draw a card. So Nathan will get his card back, but he's using up a lot of his mana this turn, and he doesn't get Liliana of the Veil. Infernal Grasp. He also has a Bank Buster activation if he'd like it. So could Infernal Grasp Urtai choosing to hold it back? And now, given that Elite doesn't have any counter magic, could choose to go ahead and just slam the AO. Again, still probably mindful of a counterspell, but given that interaction earlier, mm -hmm. right, where Nathan did, you know, if he had to make this appear, he certainly would have cast it on the Wandering Emperor. There's a good shot that the only way Nathan would have something like that is if he drew it in the last couple turns. That's right. Now, he's seen a few new cards off of Blood Tokens, right. but at You're least one of them's not make disappear. And that means that AO resolves. It's on the battlefield now. Wandering Emperor's been on the battlefield for multiple turns, and it looks like Ely wants to keep it there. Now Nathan, Perhaps forcing the issue here. Nathan really wants to find a black source here. He cycled through some of them earlier. And, and if he does... Oof, Fable. No. And black source? Blood Tithe Harvester. Now, B Blood Tithe Harvester does allow Nathan to kill Ao and cross his fingers. Okay. Right? That is an option that he has. But a lot of really annoying, sticky threats on the battlefield here from Ely's side. Yeah, he's been able to really leverage the Wandering Emperor for multiple turns as well. And as Nathan just hasn't found a clean answer for it. Right. You know, the Invoke to Spare is his best answer, and he just still can't cast it. And he hasn't been adding to his board. All right. What you got? AO is going to fall. And then we're going to assume it's going to be the first option here for AO. What do we got? A shield drill? Shield a couple of two. Oh, oh, the full brick. Nothing for Ely oh, Cassis. No. What a beating. That's the first time we've seen that. That on is the camera. first whiff that we've seen. Wow. Just stone nothing. And Nathan Stoyer says, okay. I mean, if you're a Nathan Stoyer fan, that's basically Huge. exactly what you wanted. Now he can actually clean up this board most of the way. Yeah, he can, uh, he can choose to use the Infernal Grasp here on the Urtai, crew up the Bank Buster, and then eat up the Tutu, or else the Wandering Emperor dies. Boy, can you imagine? Even if he had just hit, like, a Denic or something just Anything. sitting there, this would be a totally different situation. All right, we need, we need uh, Frank Carson to run the numbers here, figure out what the chances <laughs> was on a total whiff. Oh. And there's the Bank Buster crashing in. It's going to eat up this 2-2 token that does leave Wandering Emperor around. I mean, but, but now we're on an empty board. 
What Nathan's cleaned everything up other than the Crazy. Wandering Emperor. He still doesn't have the fourth black mana source, right, for Invoke? He doesn't. So that, but when that floodgate gets opened up, he could just ride those to victory. Right. So Ely has a lot of work to do to rebuild his board, start applying pressure before Nathan gets to just chain Invoke Despairs together. And I don't know, Ludovic plus Tenacious Underdog, is that enough? It's not feeling like it. No. I mean, there is still Wandering Emperor. There is. This is a pretty good rebuild. You know, right. we gotta give Elia a clap here. He had nothing left after that turn, and now all of a sudden he's got three creatures. But Nathan is setting at Ooh, a pretty healthy life total, and that is an Invoke Despair. Ely Cassis has only one blue mana avail available to him, so very likely Nathan just going to be slamming this Invoke Despair. Yeah, for counter spells, there's nothing here for Ely you can see. So it's a clear path now for Nathan Stoyer to start resolving invokes. Oh, excuse me, holding it back. F oh no, you get a treasure, of course. Yeah, he's good to go. Yeah. So this is going to eat a two-two token, eat a wandering emperor, and, and draw a Nathan a card? a card. Yeah. Wow. Excuse me. Probably sacrificing the tenacious underdog because you can get a little value there. Okay. Ludovic would be another option just because you have a second copy in your hand. Sure. And it's a shipwreck march going into hand here for Stoyer. Wow. And Nathan is, is coming back here. He has now dealt with all the extremely difficult threats. And he's got a stacked hand. Ooh, there's Shieldra the Apocalypse. Now, is this, is this one of the, again, one of those moments where you play Shieldred and cross your fingers, right? Hope you don't have a removal spell, right? You just, you just. Maybe so. Nathan does have an Invoke Despair, but Ely does have the 2-2 to sacrifice. Yeah, it would need to be a spot removal spell. And, and, and when Nathan draws cards off the Invoke Despair, that does make him take damage. Yeah. If Ely goes for a main phase Wandering Emperor, then an Invoke Despair is extremely strong. And look, Ely just going, okay, I'm probably behind now. Yes. Which one has the highest upside? Right. See, this is the changing of gears, right? When Ely needs to be conservative, he's conservative. When he needs to be aggressive, he recognizes it and slams Shieldred. This is one of his best routes to victory. Right. And now that Invoke Despair doesn't necessarily kill Shieldred, I wonder if Nathan just goes fable Shieldred of my own. Mm -hmm. That would uh, mitigate the opposing Shieldred as well. Life totals would be jumping all over the place, but they'll be staying relatively even. And yeah, we're going to, and, and I mean, now we're getting to the point where you're going to see the fables take over this game. Yes. Those, and you know, that Invoke Despair still sitting there, that's still good value, particularly if Wandering Emperor ends up on the battlefield. Ooh, Rafine. Does that do anything here? Well, can't really attack with the ground creatures. Oh. For the time being. Yeah, I know he, he really can't. You can, you can, you can double spell this turn. You can go Rafine plus Ludovic. It's pretty good, right? Not bad. And then the next turn, you have the ability to, to try to win the game, in, in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I kind of like the Shieldred Fable double spell turn a little bit better than the yeah, Rafine Ludovic. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you're just seeing here how powerful that Invoke Despair. But not only that, of course, we all still need to remember the fact that Ely completely whiffed on an AO trigger. It would have changed this game. Okay, this is interesting. Ely's considering playing Denik from the graveyard. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, just, it's a, it's a, it does more damage, right, than a Rafine. And his kind of... Avenue to victory here is through the skies. Shoulder triggers again are going to just bounce life totals around. Ooh, discarding the wow, as Nathan well. Nathan Stoyer has some ideas here. Yeah, looking looking to try to close out this game sooner rather than later. Maybe looking to find a removal spell for Shieldred. Doesn't quite find one. A braid is an answer to the Denik. Man, Ely Cassis must have seen that and gone, wow, okay. Ely getting a little bit of value here, though. 
Denik with the trigger when a creature from anywhere goes into the graveyard, you get a clue. And there's Invoke to Spare. That's going to be just more raw card advantage here for Stoyer. He's got Ely down to nine. This is going to drop him to five. Oh, and that's another Invoke to Spare. So there's no way that Ely Cassis can survive three of those in a game, right? That's just not a thing. It's, it seems extremely, extremely difficult. You can abrade the three two, attack with everything. Right? You abrade the 3 2. The shield That's will, actually just lethal, right? The shield will bounce. And then you draw a card and, and you, you go to 2 and then. Die? You can cast a Wandering Emperor. Oh, excuse me. Oh, he also crewed up the Bank right, Buster right, right. there. Of course. And that's course. game number one going to Nathan Stoyer as he tries to even up things at one match apiece. All he has to do now is win one of the next two games to accomplish that goal and force a third and deciding match here in this mid-range mirror. We're here at the World Championship in Las Vegas. We're at Magic 30. It's been a heck of a weekend. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of people enjoying being around each other. You know, there's there's been a lot of uh, the gathering talk lately. You know, the Magic, the gathering part. People really enjoying it. And we've been bringing you coverage here at the World Championship since Friday. It's all come down to this, though. Now, this is a situation that Ely is very used to, at least in this matchup, specifically against Nathan Stoyer. Turns out game one might just not be a good matchup here for Ely. But mm. he has been able to win these post-board matches. Boy, things were looking pretty good for Ely in that game for Absolutely. a while. Absolutely. That one turn was just... An absolute crushing from Nathan Stoyer. And, you know, Ely really, really never got back on his feet after that. Yeah. <clears throat> Was leaning very heavily on kind of the presence of AO and also the possibility of getting something strong. A Rafine, a wedding announcement, two two drops, right? Anything. Okay, uh game number two underway here. Land's going to kick things off for Ely Cassis. Also worth noting that Nathan was on the play that last time. That does end up mattering a lot in right. these type of matchups. Here's Tenacious Underdog from Ely. Great start here from both players, right? Nathan does have access to kill the underdog and play a Corpse Appraiser. However, Ely also has two drop into Wedding Announcement or Rafine. Wow. So we're going to just see the gloves off here. This is both players getting to do exactly what they want. This is a trade that Nathan Stoyer can make whenever he wants. He can use the Blood Tithe, Blood Tithe Harvester next turn if he wants to go with Corpse Appraiser. Nathan did not want to block here. I would have guessed that he wanted to block and then perhaps use Corpse Appraiser Same. to get the underdog off. He can do this now, but he does cost yeah. himself three life to, to right? do it. That's what he's going to do, though. Tenacious Underdog, a great target for Corpse Appraiser. You're happy if you have one at all, but one that can come back from the yard, even better. And hello, that is another Invoke Despair here oh, for Nathan oh. trying to lock up the late game. Boy, that late game could jump up on you really quickly if you're all right. Ely Cassis. Ely on plan, Shieldred, and hope you don't have a removal spell. Currently, Nathan does not have an answer to Shieldred. Yeah, Nathan called this plan in one of his post-match interviews, Shieldred and, Shield and Prey. Because if it sticks on the battlefield, you're in such a great position. Also, another thing that Ely's probably considering here is, is I'm not going to play Rafine until my wedding announcement flips. That will at least make it so your cutdowns cannot kill my Rafine. Right. We saw him do that earlier, and it worked beautifully for him. Shieldred, so far, so good. Ely doesn't have any way to protect Shieldred at the moment. But Infernal Grasp to get this Corpse Getting Appraiser aggressive. out of the way. And there's really no great things to do here from Nathan Stoyer's perspective. Best he can do is crew up the Reckoner Bank Buster. Is he going to kill this too? Oh, Just whoa. clear the whole board? And get in for six right Beat now? Down? Hyper aggressive here from Ely Cassis. He's just removing permanence oh, whenever given the opportunity. Rough. And boom, in comes the team. Six damage down to nine. And then shoulder trigger on top of that. What can you even do here if you're Nathan? I mean... 
You can, you can cut down a token? <laughs> you can invoke despair, but I mean, you sa you can cut down a token, you sack a blood, you take more damage, and what do you, I mean, Nathan's down to eight here. He can cast invoke despair, but Ely will still have a Shieldred in play. He, he needs a spot removal spell. Because it's not going to get Shieldred, and he can't win. He's just going to die. And he's going to have to scoop wow. him up, and that is the second game. Very quickly going to Ely Cassis, recognizing the lead that he had and capitalize on it, capitalizing on it fully. Wow, back-to-back -back removal spells, clear your board, smash you, and it was too slow for Nathan. Even yeah. an Invoked Despair. Yeah, and, it, and <laughs> Nathan swapping around the removal spells a little bit, not as important to have access to the cutdown when you're on the play. Mm. Swapping that in for a fourth copy of Infernal Grasp, which kills children. There you go. That's all he really needed there. I, you know, if he could kill that Shieldred with a spot removal spell off the top, that game looks a lot different. He could stabilize from there. But Shieldred applies so much pressure. Okay, this is game three of match number oh, two. And you mulligan. need to look at Ely Cassis' seat because the world is his. He has already won the first match. So if he wins this game, he is your world champion. And if you're Nathan Stoyer, this is do or die. You lose this game. That is it. This is over. He's on a mulligan here, but this is a fantastic hand for a mulligan, right? We're looking at Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Blood Tithe Harvester. His two drop into three drop, it's kind of his signature play for the tournament, and it's done really, really well for him. Likely deciding between duress or negate. Duress is a little bit awkward because you don't know exactly when to fire, fire it off to fight against the counter spell, right? Because ideally you want to go duress into Harvester to Fable, but with the way that, with what Nathan's lands are, you just can't do that. So I think the most important thing for Nathan is to ensure that you can resolve that Fable on turn three. So I think he's going to go turn two duress oh, to okay. make sure he gets the negate or a counter. Oh, never mind. I think the Make Disappear might have changed things a little bit, right? Because uh, now see. you have the ability to go duress into Make Disappear on turn three. Does Ely need to leave Negate up here, or can he afford to play tap lands? Well, he cannot. None of his lands come into play untapped, so the coast oh, is clear no. here for Nathan to just <laughs> slam Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Wow, that's a gift for Nathan Stoyer. He's on a mulligan to six, but he's going to be very happy to get this Fable down. And there it is on the battlefield, uh, and that's exactly tough. what Ely Cassis did not want to see. Did you see him grimace yes. there? Oh, he didn't really wasn't wanting to see that. He finds his own powerful enchantment with wedding announcement. And then he can start to fight back a little bit, but can he come from this far behind? I don't know. It's tough. I mean, just Fable is just, again, going to kind of just do this by itself. Uh, Ely needs to kind of just survive the next few turns. Nathan has, that's an additional piece of interaction here. Which he's going to discard, it looks like. Wants more threats, wants to keep putting pressure here on Ely. Blood Tithe Harvester, Sulphurous Springs go into hand. He still has the Duress. And yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, Nathan has access to five mana. He can do all of the things, right? right? He can play Blood Tithe Harvester. He can Duress and keep up Make Disappear. And this Duress is going to not only take away Negate, but give Nathan Stoyer very valuable information. One note, though, right now, Nathan... Oh, would have to sack both Blood Tithe Harvesters to kill a Shieldred, which Ely will likely be casting this turn. Or he could just make Disappear, right? Oh, excuse me. He has to make Disappear, right. But he knows because of the Duress, I can just sit on right. this and snap off this Shieldred, the Apocalypse, but and Nathan Stoyer is just running over Ely yeah, here. And, and, I mean, Ely just didn't have a choice there, right? You cannot afford to play around anything. Right. And now the Fable gets to transform. Jeez. Is Nathan Stoyer finally going to take a match off of Ely Cassis in this tournament? He has yet to do so. He beat him earlier today. He beat him in the last round yesterday. He's going down to four here. Perhaps want to just kill a Blood Tithe Harvester here, right? Just take less damage. Next turn, you'll still get a 2-2. That's still an extra creature to deal with the Blood Tithe Harvester. Perhaps find a removal spell under Reflection. Not sure that that's enough. Just when you thought that Nathan was out of gas, his last card in hand is Fable, the Mirror Breaker, yeah. number two. Yeah. What a great mulligan here for Nathan. Yeah, this is on six. Looks like he's going to return the favor to Ely after that beatdown in the last game. 
And Ely Cassis has to raise his eyebrows because this is way too much. And what the best thing he can do here is Tenacious Underdog. That's it. Tenacious Underdog leaves play an adder or is he going to just go for the, the cycle here to find a removal spell for the reflection? Is that enough? I'm just going to play a land. Maybe cast Odawara. Odawara. City. Okay. He does get a 2-2, two -two, remember. Does Nathan want to discard Reckoner Bankbuster to the Fable? So if Nathan attacks with everything, Ely kills one of the creatures, blocks the other one, takes four, goes down to three. Ely could just choose to target the Blood Tithe Harvester if it gets bounced, not too bad. But I think more often than not, you're expecting Ely here to have a removal spell, not just an Odawara. Okay, well, reflection. And Ely has no choice. He has to bounce it or he dies. <laughs> Not where you want to be if you're Ely Cassis. You see that Sanctuary Warden in hand for him. You know, that could give him hope, but it just feels like he's too far behind at this point. Yeah, well, Ely not dead just yet. Down to three. Gets the trade here. Can cast a Sanctuary Warden next turn, right? That gives you a 6-6 six, six and a 2-2, two, two, but is that enough? Feels desperate. We're looking at Blood Tithe Harvester, a Bank Buster this turn, a copy. No way to interact with the copy. Infernal Grasp. That's too costly. That's, that's probably not enough here. The damage is very relevant. Taking right. the two, if you if you grasp and then play an underdog, you go down to three. And I suppose you, you can block you the Harvester. technically alive. You are technically alive if Nathan has nothing. It is hard to imagine winning from that scenario. Right, but can you... I'm wondering if Nathan just has the win if you just tap out and play the Warden. Right? Because then Nathan can make a copy of a of Harvester. A, of a harvester. You're right. Kill the token. Kill the token. Maybe it's still not enough. Yep, just going for the Warden here. All right, here goes Sanctuary Warden. It's the best thing that he can do in the late game. Complete whiff. If Ely finds any way to kill a creature, ooh. How about a Corpse Appraiser? Nathan Stoyer just needs a way to That'll get something do. out of the way. That'll do. So now you have a creature that you can also use to crew up the Bank Buster. Uh, of course. Right? And the Infernal Grasp, too. So everything oh, coming geez. together here for Nathan Stoyer in game number three Kill of the, the second copy. match. And he's finally going to prove that he can beat Ely Cassis in a best two out of three match of Magic this weekend. He evens things up at one match a piece which of course means we're going to get that critical match three decider <laughs> and look at the smiles between these two they know how close these matches yeah. are it has to just feel absurd to be in their seat can't have it any other way no. right back against the wall nathan stoyer oh and three against ely so far in this entire tournament Finally finding a way. He got there. Finally finding a way. All and right. You know, maybe that'll give him the confidence he needs to win that third and final match. Whoever wins it is going to be your world champion. We are going to take a break. When we come back, though, we will have that match for you. Don't go anywhere. And, uh, well, I don't really need to sell this one, do I? It has been up and down, back and forth. These two have fought each other multiple times over the course of our tournament. Finally, Nathan Stoyer picks up a victory over Ely Cassis, and he needed to. If he didn't win that game, we would be done here, and Ely would be your champion. As it stands, the players will once again make their way to the feature match area, and this time, it's real simple. If you've ever played a match of Magic before, it's that, except for the winner gets a World Championship trophy and $100,000. And you get to be immortalized on a Magic the Gathering You card. know, did I save the best for last there? Uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. When, when you talk to the players, that is the thing they mention. Absolutely. Like, everybody wants to be on a Magic card. Yeah. 
And we've already seen some fantastic ones, right? You guys don't mess around. Yeah, well, like, you know, we're not going to just give you a 2-mana <laughs> two 2-2 two -two with no abilities. I want to be like right? a squire. Right. I mean, if you really want, <laughs> one two Marshall, for two. you can take a little time off, you know, try to play in the Pro oh. Tour, and then maybe we'll make you a squire. Hey. There you go. I'm I'm one RCQ away okay. <laughs> from the first step towards a very long journey. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> take a look at that World Championship trophy. We mentioned that, too. It's beautiful. It's also huge. Like... I think it's it's bigger than my thigh. They, they were like, hey, you know, who should we get to hand this trophy over? I, find somebody strong. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was speaking with Ilya, and he was concerned if he wins the trophy, like how he's right. actually going to take it Like, home. how do you get it home? Of course, the $100,000 doesn't hurt either. These players have also accomplished a lot this weekend thus far. Just making it to this point, in fact, making it to the top four qualified them for all of the tournaments for the rest of the year. That's the regional championships, the pro tours, and yes, the world championship next time as well. So a huge amount accomplished for these players. But I'll tell you, they're probably not thinking about that right now, right? It's just, can I be the world champion? And I've heard a lot of people talk about what it means to be world champion. It's because it translates, right? right? There, you don't have to explain it to your Uber driver what a Mythic Championship or a Pro Tour or a set championship means. It's I was the world champion at this game, and that's what matters. Let's get into the title match here. This is going to decide it. Both players have picked up a match here in our best two out of three matches. And how do the opening hands look, Paul? Both players have nice starts here. Nathan Story playing multiple copies of Cutdown, which really allows him to get the tempo back here and deals with one of the most problematic cards in the matchup in Rafine Schemings here. So Nathan able to actually get, again, like I said, the tempo back. Now he's the one with the threat on the battlefield. He's and got his one of Liliana of the Veil vale in the main And here. it's going to be really good here if Ely just chooses to go with the Rafine. Oh. The one of Liliana here, turn three Liliana minus Get your Rafine off the battlefield, bash you for three, and I have a 3-2 and an active Planeswalker in play. Ely is not going to like this. Nathan will. Nathan is going to be very happy to see the way that things have uh, progressed. Liliana the Veil, also really great for its ability to get around Ward. Ooh, Nathan going into big brain mode here, though. He could go land Harvester... Land Activate Harvester, the, Kill Rafine. Yes. Because he could is be considered. Well, so the one thing that Nathan might be considering is, how can I lose this game? Right? Okay. And it's, well, Liliana for sure will kill something. If you had a wedding announcement, you would have played it this turn, not the Rafine. So I'm not too worried about L L Liliana getting a bad target. If I cast Blood Tithe Harvester and you follow that up with the Shieldred on turn four, well, now the Liliana is the answer to a Shieldred, right? So Nathan Beautiful. thinking multiple steps in advance here and recognizing that that's how he loses. He gives up a little bit of damage to do it, but he feels that he's far enough ahead that he can take this line. And boy, anytime you get to trade a Blood Tithe Harvester for a Rafine straight up, you're happy anyway. Right, because even this Blood Tithe Harvester can kill basically any other creature that Ely can play outside of Shieldred. That, with what Nathan has in hand, that's the only threat that he can't answer. And funny enough, the, the only reason, look at Ely, can't cast Shielder just because he doesn't have the fourth land. Right. Otherwise, he may have, which is exactly what Nathan would have preferred. Now it might get awkward, though, because, yeah, Ely's going to take a more passive route here, leaving up Make dis Disappear and Destroy Evil instead. Right, and, and now Nathan goes, okay, well, you didn't have anything. You probably have lots of reactive spells here. Going to get in for three. Nathan would have liked an untapped land here, right, because then you can run out the Bank Buster, play around Make Disappear. Does Nathan still just run this Liliana out? Lots of other options here. He cannot cast a Corpse Appraiser. Blue mana short. We'll have access to it next turn. But the thing is, if Nathan passes, he, he can't even do anything. He can't even cast the Make Disappear, right? So you're simply just passing and conceding that Ely probably has a Counterspell, and I'm okay with doing nothing this turn. Really happy to counter anything. Just anything that goes on the stack that he can hit. And this time it's going to be Reckoner Bankbuster here from Stoyer. And Ely wants to draw land. And Nathan, if you look at his hand, also wants Ely to draw land here. Beautiful. Yeah, it would be so good. Oh, and it's a Rafine, so close enough. 
close enough. Like yes. similar scenario where he can get it with Liliana, or, yeah. or even the Blood Tithe. And, and, but if he plays, remember Nathan on board has a way to kill Rafine. So right. So Ely likely will just wait. Oh, nope, he, never must, mind. he must figure that he he needs to force this interaction. <laughs> this is going to be at, pretty solid here for Nathan. Can go Liliana now because he has make disappear. Can go Liliana minus sacrifice and still keep up make disappear for children. Nathan Stoyer in a beautiful position here in our deciding match game one. And this way he can continue to put pressure on Ely's life total. That's right. That three damage is adding up very quickly. A land for Ely Cassis finally, but it's a Rafine's tower. That may be a blessing for him though, because now he's going to put Denik onto the battlefield. And maybe that'll take a make disappear rather than the Shieldred that he'd much rather play next turn. Right, because if he make disappears this turn, next turn you can still take up Liliana. If Ely taps out and plays Shieldred, Lil Liliana would be on two. You could still kill the Shieldred. Oh. Speaking of Shieldred, there's a Shieldred now for Nathan Stoyer. It's a little weird because Nathan doesn't really want to tick up Liliana just because his hand is so great. Yeah. There's but a lot of good two-mana interactive spells he could find with Corpse Appraiser here. Perhaps he'll go for that line instead. Although he doesn't seem to have access to blue mana at the moment. But for example, if he finds something like an Infernal Grasp. Yeah. Could keep that up. Another Blood Tithe Harvester would be great too. Saw one of the options was a land. Don't know if he wants the land here. You can't. Ooh, oh, there's your there's, decision. There's a fable. Yeah, so it was two lands and a fable, but you can't cast anything this turn. I, so I, a I wonder if you pick this up anyways. It's tough discarding a good spell here, but you're going to get something out of Ely's hand. You know he has all spells in it because yes. he's been missing land drops. And and is this desperation mode? For Ely, does he need to just run out Shieldred and hope? Oh, no, he can't, of course, because of the Liliana. So now, if you're Ely, it's just Urtai. Yes. Urtai could be pretty good here. Yeah, Urtai could get both of those creatures off the battlefield. That's right. If Nathan just attacks with both first off, which is what's going to happen here, Urtai Resurrected can come in, nab one of them, block the other. But Nathan's going to have three cards in hand after that and a completely clear path, including a with children. the children in hand. Right, exactly. I think he likes what he sees yeah, here. Yeah, he's in excellent position here. Could kill the Liliana. Right. Right, because if you kill the Liliana, you take three this turn, but then you can play children and not worry and, and maybe hope that that is what it takes to kind of carry you. It's like he's going to try to protect his life total the best he can. Oh! Infernal Grass was the card off of it. He can just fire that off right now if he'd like. That'll guarantee that three damage coming through, knocking Ely down to four. But if he does that, he can't run out Shieldred, though. Right. Ooh, these are very, very difficult decisions in these mid-range mirrors. But wants to continue with the pressure here. I'm wondering if it's better if, if you just go for the trade and you tick up the Liliana. No. Nathan. Tick up wants Liliana, to get the discard damage. land, play Shieldred, say go. Right. No, he's going for the damage. Infernal Grasp Beat is going to hit, and there's the three damage coming in down to four. This will allow it up. Nathan to plus Liliana the Veil still have Shieldred in hand, and it looks like Ely has bailed on his own Shieldred he, He's on, I need this land to try and top deck AO. Yes. That's what he's on. He's recognizing the desperation of the situation. He's in wedding announcement. Gosh, that would have been nice a little bit yeah. earlier, but it uh, feels like too late now. Yeah, and it's not quite lethal yet, but if Nathan just slams the Shieldred, Ely will, be able, will take three and then die once he draws a card with Shieldred in play on Nathan's right. side. Right, so effectively lethal. We've seen this before. Nathan tends to win all of his game once. Yes, he does. There it is. What an announcement. 
Yeah, that'll net him a 1-1 token for passing the turn back. And we're going to see an edict effect here. Sacrifice your 1-1, get in for three, slam Shieldred. There's nothing that Ely Cassis can do here. That's going to be game number one going to Nathan Stoyer. <laughs> he could not beat Ely all weekend, and yet he just won the last match. Now he picks up game one here. Nathan Stoyer went from yesterday losing to Ely Cassis in the last round and thinking that he was out of the top four as a result to getting in the top four on breakers, and now he's a game, a game away from being world champion. Yeah, and just clawing that too, right? Scrapping, scra never giving up, fighting, fighting, fighting. We saw his reaction after he lost to Ely. He kind of broke down, right? He's carrying that weight. I know he looks like a cool customer here because when he's in a game, he's dialed in, he's focused, but he feels that outside pressure on himself. And frankly, he puts it on himself, right? He yeah. wants to be top, top tier at this game. And I mean, I think he's already proven that, to be honest, but uh, this wouldn't be a bad way to kind of put a cherry on it. I mean, you just know how much this game means to him, right? It's just his everything. I it can't imagine, like, what his heart rate is. Like, I, it's so difficult, because if you can just separate yourself out and focus, you could just play magic and then kind of deal with what happens in the aftermath after the game's over. But come on, you are one game away from being a world champion. There's no way that's not in your head. Absolutely. And now if you're on Ely's side, got to win this one. Got to win two more, right? Got to win two more He's to kind of come back. He's done it before. And if he loses it all, he might be looking back at that one AO trigger whiff, right? He that was up a game. everything. It has not gone well since. No. Okay, opening hands here for game number two. Nathan Stoyer up a game in our deciding title match. And Nathan... Does he have a good hand? It's okay. It's not ideal. No, any hand no without any hand without fable is not ideal, right? right? But um, secondly, doesn't have a blue source in hand or a third land drop. Exactly. This could be bad if Nathan can't find his lands. Ely could have an easy route. Oh, oh no. no! That's a horrible oh, no. draw from him. A second copy of Invoke Despair. He's miles away from being able to cast that card anyway, he and the best he can do is cut down and pray. He needs to string together some land drops here to stand a chance here. Ely will continue applying maximum pressure here. Denik into Shieldred. If Nathan doesn't find back-to-back -back land, lands, he land. needs a land. Okay, That's a land. he found a Sulphurous Springs. But can't play it's anything, not needed a blue, blue land. It had to be blue, he literally can't cast anything. Ely Cassis may just run out the Shieldred here. Yeah, he found another copy of Denik. His only other option is just Tenacious Underdog. Right, and, the thing, and he's not playing around yeah, and anything. Nathan, Nathan doesn't have access to blue mana. And right. with the type of hand that Ely has, you're not really playing for the late game here, right? No. You just have all creatures. Yes. So run out Shieldred? your best one. Shieldred? He hopes it doesn't get killed, but it's blue not mana. going to. Nathan here needs blue mana to kill Shieldred. Oh, he found a cut down, which will take care of Denik, but not the primary threat. Oh, this is... This is going to be This could be here. a huge sigh of relief here for Ely because he may be spotted an easy game, too, if he can finish. And he's going to apply maximum pressure. Here comes Tenacious Underdog out of the graveyard. That is not the one from his hand. That's going to see a cut down on Denik, but it's seven damage and a card here for Ely because one more turn for Nathan at most. One more turn. Nathan's going to go down to seven here from the draw trigger. Absolutely needs to find an answer to the Shieldred. An answer or blue land? Answer? And it's a Blood no. Tithe Harvester. That is not, That's not gonna get it done. what he needed to see. That is not going to get it Can done. Can he find the blue land here and block or do something? Or, or maybe bounce the Shieldred? With Rona's Vortex? Needed to hit the land drop here he, because he, he did hit a land, but it was a swamp. Once the, oh, but that's it. Cut down Cut to down. kill Blood Tithe Harvester. Blitz in the Tenacious Underdog. We're going to see. Your turn. 
one game to decide it all. Wow, what a game for Ely Cassis. It felt like easy mode, I bet. He had the type of draw that dictated that he just played out his creatures and see what happens. And as it turns out, what happened was he won the game. We're going to get a game three for the World Championship. Nathan Stoyer will be on the play post board with his Grixis midrange deck against Ely Cassis. This is as close as they get. This is really anybody's, right? There, there's no, like, the only predictor that I would put forth is that Nathan's on the play. Right. You can't draw it up any better here, Marshall. I mean, here it is. Let's yeah. just get a good game three here to decide it all. Who will become the 2022 Magic the Gathering world champion? I'll tell you, if their hearts aren't beating out of their chest, well, mine is for them. I'm this shaking, is I'm shaking insane. A bit, yeah, I got the I got the the jitters over here, <laughs> and I'm not even in the feature match area. I'm in the booth with Paul. Like this is crazy. Yeah, take a drink of water, Nathan. Let's take a look at these opening hands and see who has the tools that they need to become the world champion. Oh, and this is an awkward hand here for Ely. Cannot play Denik. Plaza of Heroes doesn't. Plaza of Heroes helps cast Denik. But he doesn't have the other white or blue source. Right, you have cut downs. I think you might need to mulligan here for Ely. That hand does not seem good enough. What about Nathan's hand? He has double bank buster as well as a reckoner and a negate. It's okay. It's really good against Ely's current hand. Yes, it Ely's is. Ely's hand is all removal. Okay, he shipped it back. Oh, now this he's hand got is a much three better. lander with Void Ren, cut down, Sanctuary Warden, and a Denic. I think you probably want the Warden. I don't know. It's the most expensive card, though, right? Right. There's plenty of other ways to win, so Ely just making sure he doesn't get run over here in the early game. Yeah, he can guarantee to cast his spells this way. Negate off the top of the library. Tap land, tap land for both players. This is a mulligan to six for Ely. Nathan kept a somewhat slow opener, but he's got a lot of card advantage, a lot of power built into that opener. If he can just get to that mid to late game, he may be able to ride it to victory. Yeah, and a clunky start here for Ely. All tap lands could not play Denik or Tenacious Underdog on turn two. The, and mm -hmm. and with Nathan's hand, he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to, I can play this game draw go now, yeah. right? I have the bank buster. I'm drawing cards every turn. It's on you to put pressure on me. That's right. He has two counter spells in hand and a bank buster. It's really a perfect situation. And in fact, He's going to, uh, Ely's going to assume that Nathan's going to activate the Bank Buster and then he's going to bust the Bank right back with Void Rend. He knows he can't just yeah. sit here turn right. after turn and allow him to do this. And, and Nathan, if he finds a land, that's just a second Bank Buster here that's going to just continue to put him ahead on cards. Does he find oh, a land? Oh, he doesn't find it. No. He's going to have to settle for the best card in standard. All right, I guess, I guess that's not Table of the Mirror Breaker I, I, I instead. Oh, there's a wedding announcement now. There is a wedding but announcement. But he doesn't. He, so he's going to be able to double spell here with cut down and Denik, it looks like. Or perhaps even negate if he'd like. Yeah, probably wants to put something in play here. But you know Nathan is extremely likely to find some mana sources now once Fable of the Mirror Breaker goes to Chapter 2. Or Tenacious Underdog. Those are the three options he has. And it looks like he's going to go with the Underdog. Got to put pressure here, but I'm really liking Nathan's side of the battlefield here. It feels like he has the tools right now, Paul. It really, really does. And now you can discard the Harvester. Gives you fuel for the Corpse Appraiser, right? Then you can pl play the Corpse Appraiser, have something on the battlefield, still just draw cards, find the things that you need. Okay, he finds an Invoke Despair. Wow, okay. And a Blood Tithe Harvester. And Good shot, Ely runs out a wedding announcement next turn if he doesn't find a land, right? That's right. Oh, probably. The Make <laughs> Disappear does per perhaps change his approach. Yeah, Nathan just playing it slow. I could take some damage here. I want to make sure I can utilize my counter spells here. We'll Big probably, turn here for Ely. We'll probably is set to counter basically anything that Ely plays. So then Ely has to play the game of, all right, what am I going to play? to make you counter something. Denik is nice because next turn you can go Denik and keep up counter spell. Yeah. Right? So perhaps you want to use the wedding announcement this turn. It's a better use of your mana. Okay, he's going to put wedding announcement on the stack. Nathan Stoyer 
is going to use negate to counter it. Right, because make this appear is effectively a hard counter when your opponent hasn't drawn lands. Oh, it really feels like Nathan has the tools he needs to win this game. The question is, does it come together for him? Does he play mistake-free magic to get there? Yeah, is it time to run out of Corpse Appraiser to try to hit a land? Or do you play it a little bit safer and just keep up counter magic and play either the Harvester or Bankbuster? Usually in these scenarios, you either want to play one way or the other. You'll take a turn where you go boom, boom, and take the lead hard, or you'll keep in this passive mode, bank buster, go, leave up, make disappear, draw a card, that kind of thing. And Nathan hovering over the Harvester. This is a tough choice here if you're Nathan. Extremely, extremely important decision point here. A lot of great options, though, yes. right? Ely is stuck on three lands, but of course... This is the biggest match of his life. It's the biggest game that uh, either of these two will ever play. Nathan taking his time here. He's using some pain lands. He's down to 14. He's going to go with Corpse or right, perhaps looking for a land ideally here. Ideally, untapped land. He, he found finds one. it. It's Haunted Ridge. Yeah, so now everything is looking phenomenal here if you're Nathan Stoyer. You have Corpse Appraiser, Reflection, Counterspell for this turn, and no land here for Ely Cassis. He cannot find his fourth land. He finds another tenacious underdog, and this is exactly what Nathan Stoyer wants to see. He's so close. When does the avalanche hit? That's the question, because Nathan Story has been setting this up turn after turn. He's going to use Make Disappear to keep the board clear of blockers. He's going to have an active reflection of Kiki Jiki on a corpse stacked appraiser. hand. He can copy Corpse Appraiser, now has another creature here, can, can actually cast Corpse, get a Corpse Appraiser into play, and also run out Invoke Despair if he wants. Nathan Storr piloting his way to a world championship. He's 20 years old from Berkeley, California. He's been on the grind for quite a while now. He's been a competitive Magic player for the majority of his life. And he's only 20, so that says a lot. Yeah, it's weird to think of him as a potential up-and-comer because he's basically been playing the game forever. Everybody knows Nathan. Yeah. Is it just time to just slam Invoke Despair when the coast is clear? It is. Invoke Despair is going to go on the stack. That's going to knock no non-land permanence here for Ely Cassis. Two more cards in the hand and six damage coming in. Nathan Stoyer feels like he's got and it. no lands. An infernal grasp and no fourth mana here for Ely Cassis. Absolute heartbreak for him. This is going to be game. Nathan Stoyer. Ely's going to eight. Hey, look at that. The good game is queued up here. Only eight life, down to three, or takes three, down to five, I should say. He's going to clear the way with the duress as well. Invoke Despair for and the win. it is just a matter of time. And there's Invoke Despair. Nathan Stoyer is your world champion. Absolutely overcome with emotion, Paul. And I don't know how you can't not get emotional watching this.